What is up, Parmaniacs? Parastasis here, and today we're going to be taking a look, uh, or we're going to be doing something that I've wanted to do for a while, um, but never had the time, just didn't really know where to start, and just, you know, with everything else on YouTube, I've just been going in so many different directions that I, I just don't even really know what I'm doing anymore, so. Uh, but this is a book I wanted to talk about. It had some great things, and it had some awful things, uh, and I just kind of wanted to discuss that and get some opinions from you guys, and um, I do want to say that if if you're listening to this right now and you have not read the book or listened to the book and that's something you want to do stop here i will be discussing spoilers in this i don't want to ruin the book for you it is a good book worth reading even though it does have some flaws that i think should be fixed um granted the book came out over 10 years ago so i i think this is the final product that we're getting and it, it's not going to get updated but uh, it is what it is um so yeah, if you'd like to check this book out, I will have in the video description links to the Audible version and to the Amazon version. Both of those, or at least the Amazon version, will be in an affiliate link, which means if you click on it, I'll get a kickback. It won't cost you anything extra, but for you know all intents and purposes, that way you know. If you don't want to support me for whatever reason, then just go and type in Second World in Amazon. Um, I'll make another video talking about, I think I already made a video recently about the, the channel, but um, I'm probably got another one coming, but I don't know if we're going to do this content regularly. That'll kind of depend on you guys and depend on me. So we'll just see. Uh, but I do, I, I would like to start a book club type thing and, and we'll just see where it goes. So anyways, Second World is a book by Jeremy Robinson. Um, it is on Audible. I do read a lot. Um, I, I read, I mean, I don't know if I would say a lot. I think in the last... I don't know, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 books in the past six months. So if that's a lot, yes, I read a lot. If not, okay. Uh, these are the books I'm currently reading and or have read. Um, so if you have any questions or thoughts about these, let me know. Uh, but we're talking about Second World today. So uh, Jeremy Robinson does have other books. Uh, he is still apparently an active writer. He's working with R.C. Bray now, which is one of my favorite narrators. Uh, however, this book is narrated by Phil Gigante or Giga Gigante. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, kind of an interesting thing about Phil, um, which is kind of weird. Um, back in 2012 or 13, somewhere around there, maybe it was 2016, um, he got in trouble for doing bad things with uh, minors. So, well, a minor, and it was—I I don't know all the details because it was very hush hush. And uh, but it, it it blew up for his own. He, he apparently did like a romance novel set up or something or other. Um, and then like he disappears off the face of the planet, and then he came back this year, which is kind of interesting because we live in a world where you get canceled for saying the wrong words about politics or religion or some shit and this guy did bad well he anyways you can go look it up if you're interested but i don't know what all he did or didn't do but he got in trouble got caught and yet he can still do his job which i guess everybody has a chance to earn a living but keep that in mind that this guy has a sordid past which is really awful because i liked his narration it's <laughs> It reminds me, if anybody ever watched the Dave Chappelle thing, uh, or any of Dave Chappelle's stuff, he has this skit, or bit, or whatever you want to call it, where he talks about Bill Cosby, and he's like, you know, Bill Cosby, you know, he did great things, he had these, you know, uh, foundations set up to pay for people's colleges, and, and helped, you know, disaffected youth, and underprivileged people, and he saved a lot of people, and made a lot of changes to people's lives. But he also raped some people. And, you know, and then he went into all the bad stuff he did and he went into all the good stuff he did. He's like, I guess what I'm trying to say is he raped, but he saved more than he raped. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of a fucked up way to look at it. But anyways, if you like Dave Chappelle or if you found that funny or if you found it disturbing and want to know more, there's this, you can Google that too. But um, so, yeah, keep in mind, if you decide to get this book, um, Phil might not be a nice guy, but I don't know the details, so I'm not going to say one way or another. Uh, although, coincidentally, he did just get into the, let's see, newest rivals. I think it's the Sword of Shannara series, which I want to say Terry Brooks is kind of well known. So it's a little weird because he's basically done this entire series for this guy. But if you look, like some of these books weren't really all that good. And then these are the... 
I think these are the the ones that he did back in the day before he, he did the bad thing. Um, anyways, uh, he's a great narrator, but he, he has apparently questionable morals. So keep that in mind if you decide to get this on Audible. You may or may not somehow support him. I don't know how royalties work. Or, hey, hey, Maple, get over here. I don't know how royalties work with uh, audiobooks. So keep that in mind if that's something that concerns you. Uh, and it probably should. Uh, I was unaware of this until after I'd already purchased the book. So I was halfway through it. So anyways, enough random talking and bullshit about <laughs> some dude's possible dark past from back in 2016. Um, and sorry for the dog borking like crazy. Um, so what is Second World? Second World, and again, spoilers, this is your last warning. Get off the video if you haven't watched this or pause it. Go listen to it or read it and then come back. Um... The general gist of Second World is the Nazis, right before they lost the World War II, and I, I use the word lost in quotation marks because the book alludes that they didn't lose, they just gave up on purpose, which I think is fucking hilarious, but it might explain a few stupid decisions Hitler made, like, you know, deciding to attack the Soviets and open up an entirely second front stupidly, but that's an entire different discussion, and you have to go talk to my dad about that one. Dog, I will fucking kill you if you don't shut up. Get over here. Get, sit down. So anyways, um, they discovered some technology, and, and this isn't this isn't fiction. I mean, the, the Nazis were, there were some geniuses there. I mean, they discovered, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of responsible for a lot of the breakthroughs in rocketry and nuclear science and, and a lot of other stuff. And after the war, a lot of the um, scientists that had been, you know, working there uh, kind of joined America and our allies and they made stuff for us and you know there's some questionable morals in there I mean at the same time you know just because you're a scientist for one country doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad guy you know but I mean at the same time uh, there's some questionable morals there but um, it, it happened and it's true and it's it's weird so anyways uh, the general gist of it is when the Nazis uh, they came up with some great t t fictional technology like anti-gravity a device called the bell which could liquefy humans and a few other really weird things so um very odd very odd stuff so um when they lost the war they kind of covered it all up they went into hiding they um you know made sure not to you know lose that technology and then they basically infiltrated the united states and you know europe and a bunch of other countries and basically put themselves in, in power which you know wouldn't have been that hard to do so to speak over 30 or 40 years because a lot of these guys were very smart and so you know some of them went into you know rocketry and then some of these you know people and companies basically they filtered throughout our society got into powerful parties and groups spread their nazism and white supremacy and kind of took over more or less portions of the government and so anyways um they found out more or less how to fucking pull iron out of the asteroid belt it's a little weird but they more or less use this technology to pull iron with you know magnetic fields out of the asteroid belts and pull it into certain locations on the planet and i don't know how real this is but apparently iron and oxygen like when it oxidizes it can deplete oxygen or at least in the book it does and i don't know if this is true scientists will have to you know weigh in um and so they dumped a bunch of these iron flakes in an area and it more or less sucked all the oxygen so they hit like three different places obviously you know we're talking nazis here so they hit jerusalem um miami and i don't remember the third or fourth locations but it was a test and so basically red flakes fell out of the sky people were like oh it's cool it's cool well lead poisoning is or not lead poisoning iron poisoning apparently fucks you up or at least it does in the book and so uh, if you were outside or playing in the red snow you basically went into organ failure like five days later and died um that's assuming of course because the iron flakes also sucked all the oxygen out of the air through a chemical reaction so um, it depleted oxygen and this this is something i had a problem with because and one of the scientists will have to kind of weigh in on this and i'm 
pretty much talking about you lost. So a chemical reaction in the atmosphere, our atmosphere is, I think, 71% nitrogen or something along those lines. And so this would have like attached to the iron molecules or, or the air, the oxygen molecules or the chemical reaction with the oxygen in the atmosphere, which would have, you know, oxidized the iron, which would have removed oxygen from the atmosphere. But my point is the atmosphere is kind of fucking big and there's osmosis and all of that shit and diffusion. And so I'm thinking that even if you sucked all the oxygen out of one part of the world, there's enough oxygen on the planet and, you know, with weather systems and wind and all of that, that you really couldn't get rid of oxygen in one part of the area for long. You could probably do it for a little bit, especially if you dumped a lot, but I don't know how long it would last. But anyways, they basically sucked all the oxygen out of Florida uh, and like Israel and a few other places and killed like 30 million people. So the book starts off with that happening and this uh, (laughs) your superhero, which is an NCIS agent. he is a former Navy SEAL because, of course, when you're a Navy SEAL, afterwards you're going to join, um, you know, the military NCIS, which uh, is basically like the investigation unit. It's kind of like the CSI of the Navy, so to speak. So it just doesn't really make sense to me. Like, if you bust your ass to become a SEAL, why would you downgrade into the NCIS? It just does. I don't understand. I mean, so anyways, he he investigated a bunch of water shit. Well, those guys who don't know, seals like the water. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about the animal seals. I'm talking about Navy seals. And again, I only know this from shit I've read. So if you're a Navy seal and I get this wrong, please feel free to correct me. But they do a lot of water training. They love the water, Uh, water combat, you know, anti-ship shit, you know, submarines, uh, swimming underwater, holding your breath for, you know, ever. All that shit is their thing. So this guy was basically on vacation, so to speak, doing an investigation, mainly on vacation at this underwater place that you could free dive to. And it was like 100 feet down and it had one of those like, uh, what do you call it? Like, it's not an infinity pool. It's basically where it's an it's a it's a place underwater that's also a habitat and that the habitat you can swim up into it. And then you're in the habitat and you can basically surface inside the habitat and just walk into your bedroom, if that makes sense. So it was kind of like that, but it was an underwater research thing. So anyways, he was out there doing that. And then he noticed there were red flakes coming down and there were a lot of dead fish and he couldn't quite understand. And that's kind of interesting because I believe the red flakes would also deoxygenate the water, which would kill fish, at least to an extent, um, which it did. Uh, if I recall, um, they, they didn't do much of this, and this was at the beginning, and it's been a couple weeks. But, um, anyways, he thought there were poachers or something, so he swam up to the surface and realized he couldn't breathe, but he had oxygen, so he went down, and then he was trying to, you know, survive down there, and then a whale died and took out his entire, like, structure somehow in a current. Like, I don't know how a, a current is going to move. A fucking humpback whale big enough to knock a structure over but the structure got knocked loose and then fell on itself and like the water where you would surface and i'm holding my hands where you can't see but you would swim underneath the structure and then up through the pool into the structure but if that structure were to fall flat you would be trapped think of it like a hat where the entrance to the hat is at the bottom and if you put the hot the bottom on the ocean floor you can't get in or out does that make sense so um, he luckily managed to survive, obviously. So, um, and then he goes to Miami and, you, you know, uses scuba gear to basically move around and finds a little girl in a hospital that was surviving in an oxygen tent because she was burned. And then they start going around and they realize there are evil Nazis in the town that are trying to kill people using all World War II weapons and shit, which didn't make sense. And, Uh, This brings us to the second part of this book that drove me absolutely crazy. So this is a Navy SEAL. He knows his shit. And he constantly called magazines for a gun clips. Always. Every single fucking time. Never called in a magazine. 
I know that's a stupid thing. It only bugs me. I'm sure it doesn't bug most people. And colloquially, I think everybody understands that a clip is what the average individual that doesn't know anything about guns might call a magazine. But if you're going to be representing someone who's a Navy SEAL, calling it a clip is just not accurate. I don't think people in the military call magazines clips because it's just not what it is, you know. It's a semantics thing, but a clip is something that you would feed into an M1 Garand. It is a totally different thing than a magazine. I know it's stupid. I'm into guns. It bugs me. If it's a minor thing, it's no big deal, but it's mentioned like literally like 150 times in the fucking book, and it just every single time is like being stuck in the eye. So that should be fixed, in my opinion. Um, and it might have been in the in the writings. Keep in mind, you know, when you pay a, a narrator to read your book, you can't exactly be like, hey, Bill, I need you to go back through that, you know, uh, 11 hours and 20 minutes of audio dialogue. And every time you say the word clip, just go ahead and replace it with magazine if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, that's a pain in the fucking ass. So, you know, it is what it is. My second big complaint about this book, and I'm not going to go too much further into it because I don't want to ruin everything for you, but there was a scene later in the book. Uh, it was one of the final moments, so to speak, of the book. And I haven't actually gotten to the conclusion here. I think I have 10 minutes left, 15 minutes left of the book. Well, why didn't you just listen to that before you got to doing this? Well, I meant to, but I ran out of time, and this thing was bugging the fucking shit out of me, and I need to ask scientists that are on my channel, yes, I'm talking to you, Lost, to maybe explain this to me. So, in the book, they like to suck the oxygen out of places, that's just their thing. I don't know why, it's just their thing. So, basically, the Nazis were gonna, they, at first they only hit three or four places, and then they were gonna hit the entire world, and their goal was basically to deoxygenate the entire world, kill everybody, and then, you know, rebuild the Fourth Reich, which is an absolutely insane idea, because the number of people you would need to repopulate the planet and have any form of genetic diversity is not a small amount. I mean, we're talking... I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like five or six thousand minimum. And then with those five or six thousand people, you gotta hope you don't have genetic defects. You don't you hope that everyone is having at least three or four children, because if they're not, you're fucked. Um, and then people gotta procreate and they gotta procreate virulently, or else you're all gonna die. And if anybody gets cancer or, you know, has a like a horrible disease of some kind or genetic anomaly, you're boned. I mean, not to mention, do you know how hard it would be to clean up the corpses of five, six billion people? Not to mention the infrastructure falling apart. Do you know how many people you would have to have to rebuild the infrastructure? Do you know how hard, like, just the basics, like water, purification, sewage, power, food, logistics, transportation, farming, uh animal husbandry uh, pharmaceuticals engineering i mean like that's not a little bit of information that's a lot of people that need to know a lot of very very specific shit oh well we just get on the internet well the internet's fucking gone sure all the data would still be there and you could probably go find it all but like dude that's a lot of work and you're running the risk of fucking killing everybody because remember anyways but I digress. Let's get to my second major point that I have. We're not going to talk about Nazis making stupid Nazi decisions because that seems to be the general whole thing about being a Nazi is you're incapable of making smart decisions, i.e. Hitler attacking Russia in the winter. But we're not going to talk about that again because that's bringing up the war. And if you want to hear that, you'll have to listen to my dad. <laughs> Anyways, so they attack the secret Nazi bunker where the Nazis were going to hide out and let everybody else die. And... Uh, they somehow managed to use the air conditioning system to suck all the oxygen out of the base, which doesn't make sense to me because, again, from a science perspective, you can close the system off, right? And then you can make sure that you aren't, you're circulating the system inside and you're not circulating the system outside. And you can use pressurization to make a vacuum. 
But I don't think you can just suck the oxygen out of a giant underground bunker functional for over 5,000, 10,000 people, somewhere around there, with an air conditioning system. It doesn't make sense. But okay, I'll give it to you. We'll just... I'm giving it to you. It doesn't make sense. And you're still using the word clips and it's still driving me absolutely batshit, but I'm okay with it. But the part I couldn't handle, and I'm sorry, Jeremy, I liked every other part of your book. If you're listening to this and I'm not trying to flame on you and I'm sorry if I'm coming off that way, but this drove me nuts. The hero is in a warehouse and he's having a fight against a guy and basically a giant robot tripod death robot mech thing it's got two gatlin guns on it which would kill anybody and then two bells on it which can liquefy humans um and that's a nazi weapon they call it the bell we're not going to talk about it but it basically turns a human into liquid it's crazy but it just go with it so anyways he's only using the bells instead of the gatlin guns which would kill the guy but he's using the bells because he doesn't want to damage the fuhrer's car right okay So they've sucked all the oxygen out of the place with the air conditioning system. So there's no more oxygen. And again, I don't know how you could do that without making a vacuum, which would have fucking killed everybody with exposed skin anyway, but making their blood boil. But apparently they just sucked the oxygen out and left all the other stuff. So we're just going to, for the sake of things, assume they just somehow sucked the oxygen out and they left nitrogen, okay? or some other gas, but the oxygen is gone. So the hero gets into Hitler's crate where his car is, and apparently Hitler liked this Mercedes that was a six-wheel tank thing. I don't understand it. I didn't look it up. I probably could look it up, but apparently there were only like eight of them made, and the guy in the Doom mech won't shoot him with the Gatlin guns that would go through the car and kill him because he'd fuck up the Fuhrer's car, and then the Fuhrer would be really unhappy after he was, you know, brought out of hibernation, you know, for the last 60-some-odd years or whatever. So, So the hero crawls into the car and then tries to start the car with the key that's conveniently in the ignition in the crated car from the 40s and the car won't start because quote unquote there's not enough oxygen and he's using a gas mask or like a rebreather so well they call it a pony bottle which is apparently does exist it's like a little let's see pony bottle it is a little bitty like oxygen thingy and it's smaller and apparently it can fit on a utility belt. It's this thing here, not this thing here. So it's still pretty big and apparently they didn't notice him having it on his utility belt, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, so anyways, he's breathing on that while fighting the giant guy in the mech. He gets in the car, tries to start it. Car won't start because there's no oxygen. Okay. Well, internal combustion needs oxygen right okay so internal combustion is made by fuel injection or i guess i don't know how old cars work i know there's a carburetor or some shit like that and basically gasoline gets pumped into the engine and then ignited with spark plugs and then you have fire right but you have to have oxygen to have fire right yes okay without oxygen you can't have fire now i'm sure the scientists are like oh but wait sir you can have other gases and maybe you can have fire i don't know i don't know science shit But you couldn't, in the book, have fire, and he literally said this, oh, there's no oxygen, therefore it won't work. So in the same fucking chapter, immediately he exits the car, takes a knife, punctures the gas can, so that now gas is pouring out on the ground under the car. And then he, you know, runs away from the the Doom Trooper and then stands out in the open so the Doom Trooper will face him. And the guy's like, ah, ah, I have you now. And he's like, oh, do you? And then he shoots the gas and the gas explodes, which then makes the top of the warehouse collapse and not kill the guy, but just bury the mech. So I don't understand, and this drove me nuts, I don't understand how you can say, well, we can't have combustion and the car won't work, but if we puncture the gas tank and shoot it with a bullet, it will explode. Because as far as I know, to explode, gas is... Gas itself, I understand, it is flammable, but it's not explosive. The gas vapor that comes off of gas, so gas in the vapor form, is explosive. 
Um, but both of those to burn or explode, you have to have oxygen. And there's none because they're all having to use breathing apparatuses and people are fucking dying because they sucked all the oxygen out. So if you literally can't drive the car, then you also can't explode the freaking gas that you couldn't drive the car with because it wouldn't light, but now it's going to light. No. Why? So yeah, those were the two major problems I had with the book. And I, I literally had to stop after that fight because I was just like, what? And I had to go back and listen to it again to make sure I hadn't missed anything. But I mean, and it's not the overall. I mean, the overall arc of the, the story is great. I liked the overall arc. I like, and I, I'm hoping the conclusion's good. I got like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna go listen to that right after this. I hope it's good. I hope all the Nazis die horribly. There were some good moral decisions in the book. I liked those. I thought it was great. But the clip thing and then the no oxygen gas explosion thing, I don't know. Both of those things kind of broke me. So let me know what you think. You know, am I, am I wrong about the gas thing? Because I don't think nitrogen would burn gas. I, I don't think that's capable. Um, but I may be wrong. So nitrogen might burn more freely. Um, but then if the nitrogen would burn it, then shouldn't the car have started because it's just this it's literally the same thing gas exploding on the ground or gas exploding in your engine it's the same thing right so either he was wrong twice well wrong once right once or uh, anyways and, and again how the fuck do you suck the oxygen out of an environment that is sealed without making it a vacuum you can't just like i don't i don't think you can just suck oxygen only out and be like all right the rest of you gases y'all just stay right there okay we're going to take the oxygen out i don't know scientists you guys can weigh in because you guys do this type of shit um other than that i thought it was good um questionable morals aside phil gigante did a great job i enjoyed listening to him he did a great job on the characters like the vo like when you hear a good voice actor who can differentiate with their own voice four or five different characters uniquely and constantly do those characters and i don't think people really appreciate that but like you know you have your guy voice you have your other guy like you have four or five different guy voices you have your two or three different female voices you have three or four different german guy voices with the Chekhov accent that actually sounds legit you know not like mine oh hans you know not, not my stupid german accents but like real like it was good it was good oh and i gotta say <laughs> like this and uh I, I used to watch oh man in the high tower on uh amazon obergruppenfuhrer is the coolest fucking title ever i don't know what that means in german i think it's like commander or some shit but obergruppenfuhrer is a really cool title and if it wasn't associated with evil fucking people I would really like that title just because I think it sounds cool. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways. Uh, interesting book. Other than those two glaring issues, I think it's definitely worth a read and or listen. As long as you don't, you know, mind Phil and his, you know, questionable past. Um, other than that, I thought it was good. So, uh, I'm going to probably follow up with some of Jeremy's other stuff. He has plenty of other books here that uh, might be good. Um, I think I actually have. Yeah. I have some of these. So, I'm going to have to listen to some. Did I actually finish this? Did I finish this? I don't know. Interesting. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to probably read some more of his books, uh, and we may review some of those. Um, also, I'm also reading right now um, this series, and I've recommended this to Lax and a few others, uh, but the Forgotten Ruin series is really... It's good and interesting, and if you want to hear more about it, let me know in the comments section. If you do, I'll make a... Um, a thing about that i'm currently in the middle of this one i just finished wayward galaxy not wayward galaxy uh buh, 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 buh. forgotten ruin 2 which is probably further back because i took a break from the series for a little while I'm trying to find where it is anyways <laughs> it's a little bit back here yeah it was back in december i i read hit and fade and then there's one other one 
I guess it's before, yeah, I guess it was before that. But uh, basically the general gist of that, and without going into any detail, um, a bunch of rangers get sent 10,000 years in the future. And then it's hobbits and orcs and goblins and necromancers and Tolkien time. Uh, but it's 10,000 years in the future. It's a wild ride. So you got guys with, you know, machine guns dealing with necromancers. It's, 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 it's weird. It's kind of, it is li- like, I literally read the, like, the intro for it. I was like, the fuck? So if you guys want to hear about that, let me know. And I can, I can talk about some of that. Uh, I am finishing up hopefully this book in the next couple days. It's only 200 pages. It's pretty small. I think it's 200 pages. I'll think. Does it even show here? I guess it doesn't. Yeah, right here. 228 pages. That's that's nothing. It's like a night for me. So I'll try to get this finished up. But let me know what you guys think um, about this. You know, do you want to hear more types of stuff like this? Do you not? Let me know. Um, and we'll, we'll see where we go. Um, and if so, we may do like a book club type deal where I talk about these books and, you know, we read them together. Like right now, if you want to catch up with me, um, read Forgotten Ruin 1 and 2 and start on 3. And then uh, I plan on talking about 3 if you guys want to hear about it when I finish it up. Because he's actually going to talk. The problem with this series is he doesn't talk about how they got there really much. It's it's like you it's just like a given. It's like oh, ten thousand years in the future, and we're rangers, and there's bad stuff, and brr, and then you're just going. So in this, at the end of the book, apparently he explains all that shit. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm I'm not really into fantasy, but it's kind of interesting, um, and I kind of want to see how he did it. I'm thinking nanobots or something, or na- not nanobots, but anyways, I'm talking too much. If you want to hear it, let me know. I'll do another video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. Leave a comment in the comment section. Both of those things dramatically boost the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't already. There's a join button down below if you'd like to uh, help support the channel financially for whatever crazy reason um that being said that's it for me you guys have a great night enjoy your week and i'll catch you guys next clip